The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is the best smartphone optical zoom camera of all time. So the one big question I have is, has technology advanced enough for smartphone zooms to compete with this? The Nikon Coolpix P1000 is a beast of a bridge camera with 125 times optical zoom. The odds are stacked against us, but let's see where this goes. Let the facts speak. Starting off with the Nikon Coolpix P1000 with its incredible 125 times optical zoom into the TV tower. Fun fact, there's an expensive restaurant behind those windows. Time for the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, and it actually can go all the way to match the Coolpix with the difference of digital zoom being brought into the mix. You must have noticed though, that was a video comparison. The camera software in phones has risen to insane levels in 2023, and I definitely think we're gonna get some different results when we take some photos. Was I on point? You bet I was. A direct comparison between the 10x optical zoom of the S23 Ultra against the P1000 is a success for both. You can see the added sharpness and saturation on the image taken by the smartphone, and while it does bring out more detail by adding sharpness and trying to control the noise, it's definitely not going to be everyone's cup of tea. 30 times zoom has the same traits, but the P1000 still being on optical zoom compared to the hybrid zoom of the S23 Ultra will ensure it produces the nicer looking photo. Jamming it up all the way to 100 times is a really cool feature, and I'm really loving what Nikon has to offer with this kind of old school looking photo. So I think we're off to a pretty interesting start. And you know what I always say, if you're having a good time, drop a like and a sub to help us out. So what else can I zoom into? Oh, there's actually the golden angel called the victory column, or what Germans call it, the Ziegesäule. There's a lot of details to be captured, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so that's a really nice photo by the S23 Ultra. I appreciate the punchy colors making everything look alive, and also that it's a lot easier to separate stuff in the frame. 30 times the huge swing in the other direction though, and all I can say is, wow. The photo of the P1000 looks absolutely stunning, way better than the TV tower. 100 times is even more impressive as this photo looks so good, I might actually just use this on social media. Really impressive stuff. Alright, so I'm actually at a loss for words. I know this bridge camera was built with zoom in mind, but for this price and this ease of use, this performance is just extraordinary. Alright, so let's see what else we can do. Is that actually the moon in broad daylight? Alright, we have to check this out. I honestly don't remember the last time I saw the moon in broad daylight. It looks pretty cool. Even with the bright sky and without a tripod, it's really neat how everything looks pretty visible at a 125 times optical zoom, all the way down to the texture of the craters. Wow, this is actually an insane shot, but I want to get it just perfect. So while we set up the equipment, let's just do a couple of other shots and then I do promise you we're going to get back to the moon. Here's some animals at the zoo. I love how the phone software just said I don't know what I'm looking at, so the animals are kind of blended together with the boulders on the left. Here's a couple of people having some tea and coffee during their break right on the side of the street. This is actually a common sight in Berlin and one of the reasons I love this city. And here is a photo of the nearby hotel. The Galaxy performed a bit better here than it usually does because phone software is pretty good at seeing and understanding text. Alright guys, you know what time it is? It's zoom to the moon o'clock. You didn't think that we were going to leave you hanging without some comparison photos, did you? Well, starting off with the optical zoom of the S23, I am kind of impressed. The funny thing is, Samsung's moon recognition technology apparently doesn't work during the daytime, so it can't play around with the exposure and other settings to get a better result. All in all, even though the 100 times zoom doesn't look the best, I do think that this is still an impressive performance for a smartphone. Okay, so that was actually insanely cool, but do you know what would be even cooler if we could look at the moon at night? Let me just get my time machine ready and we're all set. Nice. At first, it doesn't look like much, but be patient. Time is all we need. There we go. It's almost like we're standing on the moon. Wait, is that the American flag? <laughs> cool. I guess we won't be able to get the same quality with the S23 Ultra when we zoom straight in because you need to activate the hidden trick. 
A side-by-side -side comparison is not possible even with the 10 times optical zoom because you need to use a sweet spot of the Galaxy flagship which is zooming in 30 times. That's when the phone realizes you're actually looking at the moon and does some smart AI tricks as well as adjusting the exposure settings to give you a near perfect image. Here's a screen recording for you to better understand how this feature works and I personally think it's pretty neat. This only works around 30 times though so when you want to get even closer you're not going to get a comparable result. Still we can tell that it's a real moon because the textures and the craters are in the same place. And of course we're going to go all the way at the end. The photo of the P1000 is just so beautiful it looks like one of those artificially enhanced movie scenes but it's not. There's a great balance between light and dark and the sharpness is on point for us to be able to fully appreciate all the details. Well, it's completely dark out now, but I still want to show you guys some videos, so why don't we just get back to where we were? Perfect. Oh, there's actually a train that I want to catch. Okay, so even though the P1000 can get closer in a slightly better quality, I feel that one must appreciate the stabilization of the S23 Ultra. Software is pretty cool when it works, and it's definitely working here. Still, it's never going to be as consistent as a dedicated zoom lens on a dedicated zoom camera. If you use it with a tripod, which you should, you'll get even better results. That marks the end of our zoom comparison video between the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Nikon Coolpix P1000. Even though the end result isn't really a contest, I do think that technology is getting better and better, and that one day someone will find a way to utilize smartphone zoom in a way that will allow us to see similar results. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.